problem. You all bought us out of our groundwater demo tanks for the classroom, and that's a great problem to have. But when we're looking at the tanks and thinking about making more of these because we wanted to get them back in stock quickly, these take forever to assemble. There's a lot of siliconing to go on to get them to not leak and acrylic gluing. We wanted to see if we could assemble these a little bit faster. We obviously have to machine the base still, but well, the corners are the painful part. And this is the best solution we've come up with, which is gluing the acrylic together and then having some aluminum angle that we put silicone in and squeeze up against there. But it's it's not perfect. Occasionally we still get leaks that we have to fix and we have to cut this aluminum angle individually and thin aluminum angle can be kind of tricky to cut. Then we have to dress the ends and tumble them so that they're not sharp. So we're gonna try a couple of different things here. And I wanna show you the progression that we've gone through and see if anybody has any better ideas. This was the first attempt, we replaced the aluminum angles with 3D printed angles, except the 3D printed angles had slots that fit the different size acrylic. Seemed like it would work really well. And this was actually potentially more painful to assemble than the aluminum. So we saved a little bit of time by not having to cut and deburr all that aluminum, but the assembly was pretty bad actually. It didn't leak, but not exactly what we were going for. So the next thing that we tried was replacing the entire end cap with a 3D print. So this is PET G, so it's very strong. We weren't really sure, especially with the layer lines being like this, if this was going to leak or not. You can see we've still got the slots for the, the sidewalls here. And really this worked pretty well. Uh, it didn't leak through the 3D print. We only had one very small leak down on the corner that was easy to fix. And it's actually a lot more rigid, I think. I think this is a little more durable of a product. It's not really any cheaper to make, which is fine because the aluminum is relatively cheap. Pet G is also relatively cheap, but there's a lot of it here, and this is, takes a long time to print. But um, I think the only thing I can really think now is we'll add some flange along here to help seal down at the bottom a little better and help uh, make the job of siliconing and make it look good easier. But what do you think about this? Is this something that is just as good of a solution for you in the classroom? Or is this something that we shouldn't do? Do you have a better idea on how to do this? Because we've been putting a lot of these kits in your classrooms, which is great, but it also means we need to figure out ways to make them a little bit more efficiently now that they're selling. So if you bought one, thank you. If you have any thoughts, please leave it down below and subscribe to follow along as we continue to figure out better ways to make scientific instruments for you.